This is the face of someone who feels like they're dying and who really doesn't want to be doing any speaking today. So hopefully I can keep this short. Uh, uh, oh, God. As always, if you want to listen to this, subscribe pod, podcast in the description. I uh, myself and Sarah have woken up feeling awful, uh, really, really ill. And I'm not 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 down for it. You know, there's uh, quite often, not quite often, occasionally, I'm like, oh, it'd be quite nice to be ill, you know, just sit in bed all day, like watch Netflix. Realistically now, it's like, oh, no, still got still to do stuff. Still got to look after the baby, walk the dog. Still here in the office because orders have got to be done because customers keep them happy. N- number one business tip right there. And, uh, yeah, Keelan and Bloggy have gone to Oslo early i'm meant to be going in two days time right now don't particularly want to get on a plane don't particularly want to travel i really want to go to oslo but the thought of it disgusting um i've got this room cooking i've got a radiator literally right here and i'm trying to make myself very sweaty and hopefully sweat this thing out uh i've got notes i've already forgotten what i'm talking about so i'm going to be looking at this screen quite a lot Good week of sales is the first thing I've got written down. Um, okay, let's try and actually get my head in the game. Yeah, this uh, week, like, I guess it's like a week and a half. I was waiting to do a few more things before filming this, but I don't think they're going to happen this week. So I just figured I'd get this done. I actually wrote these notes a few days ago as well. So God knows if they are... Uh, why am I vibrating? Sorry, my watch is going off. Uh, God knows if they are relevant. But yeah, we've had... Um, an uptick in sales, which I think predominantly is due to more presence on YouTube, to be honest. Obviously, we had, I say obviously, we, we had the um, our video of Stora's wall event um, exploded. It's had like 1.1 million views now, which in terms of ad revenue is about three grand, it's looking like. We haven't yet had that come through, but that's nice because it's all essentially profit. Like, it's not like that video cost anything to make bar driving to Brighton. Um, so, yeah, that's like a nice, in terms of sort of our current cash flow issues, that's never going to hurt, just having three grand appear at a minute, like, the air. Because normally our YouTube revenue is literally about £60 a month. Um, but I think, I don't necessarily think that's been a huge driver in sales. I think in new subscribers it has been. We've done, like, another two, 3000 there. Um, sorry if I'm speaking really weird. My tongue is like, just feels ulcery. I feel just disgusting. Um, but we've obviously been putting more emphasis on training videos. Keelan's been smashing it. Um, he's in a really good headspace and, and knocked out some really good edits. There's another one dropping this week there in Oslo. We're obviously going like, yeah, there's a load of stuff coming. Um, and I think that does make a big difference just with regards to staying relevant in the community and sort of driving people's attention to like subsequent, subsequently the website and then purchasing. Um, it is a bit weird stealing Stora's viewers because we kind of got that video out before theirs, but I think, yeah, we just saw an opportunity and kind of, like we weren't, you know, trying to get it out before them, but we thought they'd drop it on Monday and then they didn't. So we just put out ours and it sort of did really well. Um, really, really been enjoying training. And just the general energy of like Keelan and Bloggy being on it with work um, and things like that. So there's been, yeah, a lot more positive compared to, I think, last week's one, which was a bit dark. Um, oh, I'm getting a bit hot now. The, uh, I think, so the, maybe I'll go on to this in a bit. Nah, fuck it. Um, one of the best conversations and a few conversations I've now had since uh, the last couple of videos was I won't name names, but a uh, a gym owner reached out to me um, and was like, why have you never really considered wholesale? And we used to do wholesale with a group called Parkour Store, if anyone remembers them. They're a bunch of German guys who were running it and they had a load of us, like I think me, Stara, Farang and things. Um, they were like wholesaling to basically, you know, capitalize on on German sales and German Germany has like a, a good... Uh, community and and we have a lot of orders coming from Germany but the advantage there was obviously the Germans were saving on shipping rates the the, the, it never really worked for us back then because it was pre me knowing how to price stuff correctly so I was already like you know selling stuff at not a loss but not making as much money and then cutting a 
large percentage off for the wholesale value. Um, and also I had this issue that I found when I was doing it where I would be, you know, let's say we had a, a, a good selling product, like a pair of trousers or something. Park Hall store would be like, cool, let's buy a chunk of those. Obviously you do get that money up front. Um, so that's better than, you know, dribs and drabs coming in from customers. But let's say we have a well selling product and we only have a hundred of them. Let's say I give 40 to Park Hall store at like a 40, 50% off margin for, for, wholesale i always was like well why why am i doing that when i could just sell them myself at full price and then also there were other downsides like if a month later we did you know a black friday sale or a sale like that or something like that you'd then get a lot of german customers buying stuff from us because actually it would still work out cheaper than park horse store um so yeah it didn't quite work back then and i'd never really turned my mind to it since then just thinking that it wouldn't it doesn't work for us we don't have high enough margins and things but we do now and we can make it work. And so this gym owner, international gym owner, was like, why haven't you considered it? And the more I considered it, I was like, it actually makes a huge amount of sense. And I, we, I've, I've been, always been quite vocal about this on the Motors podcast. I personally believe the absolute majority of gyms are not doing a good enough job with regards to showing off the culture of parkour and like... The, the 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 parkour is more than just just their gym like you go into there's a massive skate park near where i live and you go in there and before you even get in there you walk through effectively what is a shop and it has you know multiple brands tvs playing videos like accessories etc 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 and you feel like wow there's a big kind of uh brain fried industry behind skateboarding bmx etc i mean obviously i'm already aware of that but you see it, you feel it, you see all these products and then you go into the skate park. Park or gyms, it's like the reception normally has some like very basic, like here's a gym logo slapped on a t-shirt and very few people actually buy those as far as I'm aware, unless you're like a diehard, like I want to rep my particular local gym. Um, and now Darwin's barking. But so I have always thought that gyms could do a much better job of that. Not That's not to say not all gyms are doing that. There's some really good ones, but the majority... Um, and, and speaking to this gym owner, he was like, well, Motus is one of the most popular brands that we see. Like a lot of people wear Motus, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, and it's like, well, yeah, why, why are we not essentially trying to get in these, these gyms? And I think to be honest, we, we as Motus could potentially champion this and, and put a bit of a push behind this because we now have the capacity rather than selling existing stock. Let's say I've bought a hundred pairs of trousers from a factory rather than selling stock that I'm going to sell myself and make better margins on. Uh, because we now do a lot of in-house manufacturing and we can basically, like we can essentially, like an, a gym could say, cool, I want a hundred of those t-shirts and we can create them for them. Like we can back order the, the inventory needed and, and the materials needed and then create that without it hurting kind of our stock levels. Um, so it makes a lot of sense. And I've basically been looking into setting up sort of the, the back end stuff on Shopify and, and I mean, I'm committing to it really. Uh, and this, this video is kind of, I guess, a bit of a call out to say like, if this sounds appealing to it, I've already spoken to some of the, the gym owners that I know quite well, and they've all been pretty receptive of it. Um, but if this, if you own a gym and this sounds appealing to you, I would have to state predominantly international. There's not really any benefit to it being UK based. Um, I mean, there is to be fair, because it's still, you know, the customers are still going to get the, uh, the product. Sorry, I'm just glitching in my head as I process this. But the the massive benefit is obviously for international customers, it saves on shipping because that's one bulk thing that would happen. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of keen to push down this. I've got I've got things moving in the background with regards to getting it set up, and I'll be contacting some people soon. Um, but I think it could it could help us, and I think other companies should be doing it. I think gyms should be considering it. So watch this space i guess there's probably other stuff i should have thought about there but um the notes i have here are really small font and i'm just fucked <laughs> um other news uh i can't remember if i spoke about samples arriving last time but we had a lot of samples arrive and they're really good still lots of stuff to change and, and things like this but it's a good shit um the other one that we're having some good progress on is like our black friday 
plans uh, with regards to marketing and fun fun things to go around that. And I know some people are like, oh, capitalism, Black Friday, and blah, blah, blah. And I totally agree that, you know, if you're Walmart and you're making employees work the day after Thanksgiving and getting up at 5 a.m. to get trampled by a load of crowds and stuff like that, but it's like all basically increasing Black Friday effort is going to do is increase that on my head and Keelan the bloggy, but we're down for like the sweat, if you know what I mean, because it is a massive, massive, like, I can't remember the percentage. There is an incredible amount of people who do the majority of their Christmas shopping on Black Friday. And like, we do good sales in the lead up to Christmas and therefore we may as well use Black Friday as the catalyst for that. Um, but we like to have fun with it. Last year was a bit weak because we were in the process of moving and stuff like that. But the year before we had a really fun one with the the wheel thing that we did. We're not going to go quite as complex as that because this, that, it was just intense. But we've got some like cool, fun narrative stuff, some fun videos and things that we're going to be shooting. Um, but the big push that I want to do this year, because it's really easy just to discount. It's really easy just to go, oh, like, you know, T-shirt was £28, now it's £20 or whatever, and then you sell a single T-shirt. But the real thing that I want to put more of a focus this year is on, like, boosting the AOV, which is the average order value. So driving it up. So rather than let doing, like, one T-shirt of, you know, £20, trying to incentivize the parents, whoever's buying, to aim for, like, you know, 60 quid or something. So it's, like, it, it, it all comes down to website messaging, bundles, stuff like this. Um yeah stuff stuff that incentivizes them to go oh if i can get two uh, one t-shirt for 20 quid then like or let's say one t-shirt was 28 pounds and it's like okay we'll get three t-shirts for 60 or something and it's like oh i see a saving there so it's it's stuff like that that boosts it um but yeah that's that's gonna be a bit of focus obviously we're like a month and a half out but it's good to get stuff in the works i've also been slowly uh, just today actually i've done some more pushes on it it's, it's built like our email list is already really really strong and we i i do a lot of like email marketing uh it's a very 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 profitable revenue stream for us no one else does it not and not as well as motus but no one there's, there's no one in parker i know who does email marketing or takes it seriously and it's so fucking strong if you if you know what you're doing um and if anyone wants pointers i'm happy to to speak about it uh but yeah building up the email list so i've just been pushing that a bit more because it's good to obviously build that up prior to christmas black friday time things like that um with regards to the big london project i was meant to have a call a couple of calls this week actually for like initial interviews like I'm, oh my voice is like breaking um yeah like initial interviews uh not not formal ones but just chats um but two of the people i was meant to be talking to are like traveling out of the country etc um guess who they are i wonder but i want to start with a few like closer friends and ease myself into it and just start to build out those things there's, there's so much shit i've been thinking about just with regards to like you know you could interview it's short you could get a short interview with some of the security guards of the south bank or building managers and then and then there's all these narrative things about like well the ankle thing like andy and laurie introduced the ankle thing and there's there's every time i like think and i'll be walking and walking the dog i'll have these thoughts about just where this project could go and what this project could encapsulate or contain and i'm like shit there's a lot and i think the the book will have a lot more in it because it like you know you could have a small section of it that's like half a page that's about the ankle thing, things like that. The documentary I think is going to have to be uh, stripped down to a degree, and there's got to be that balance of how like muggle friendly it is. Um, I've been watching a lot of short interviews, not interviews, but like uh, do short documentaries that use archive footage. Also, just like throw my sort of memory back to things like valley uprising um a lot of skate documentaries and stuff and just thinking like okay well, where where is the balance between making it very very parkour specific and then not so parkour specific and the documentaries that i think the biggest and hardest task and the one that needs to be done right the action video is essentially what happens happens ideally the way i've been describing it to people is a snapshot of parkour at that current time like a snapshot of london parkour at that current time so sort of some start start filming sometime next year 
I think I'm definitely leaning towards the Kickstarter idea, um, using the documentary as the main incentive. So the documentary would be something that people would pay for. And the Kickstarter would effectively, I say Kickstarter, but I don't know if I would use Kickstarter or GoFundMe or I honestly don't know what's best. Um, but use the documentary as the the capitalist for that. Capitalist? Catalyst. So like build out, a, I don't know, a teaser video or something or, or get the idea condensed into something that I can then use to market and say, look, this is coming. This is going to happen. We need funding. Um, and then basically pre-sell that. So if you, if you, if you support the project, you get a free copy of that. I never really like doing like the idea of like Kickstarter where you have like free t-shirts and things. I've seen a lot of, you know, GoFundMe's and stuff get screwed over by offering too many physical product based, uh, incentives because actually, you know, it's so easy to go, oh, support the project, give us a tenner, and then you also get a free T-shirt. But actually, it's like, well, a lot of that money then accounts for that T-shirt and the shipping and things like this. Um, so doing the pre-sale of the documentary would be the main incentive and then see what else we could do. And then basically take, ideally raise like a chunk of money and then put the majority of that aside for both. I mean, I would say predominantly the the documentary and the film, like the photo book, is not going to make much money in the first place and is and maybe when that thing is finished we then do that as a pre-order separately or something like this um but really it's about securing enough capital to get the video and the documentary kind of moving and i think i would much rather now that i've put more time into thinking about it do i might have already said this but a shorter video so more like resurgence capstone sort of eight to twelve minutes long um, but heavy, heavy, heavy hitting snapshot of where parkour is and then have the documentary be the the really kind of like culturally relevant one. Um, so the video would be free, but probably use a bit of the money raised to like keep that moving, whether that's just paying for people's travel, sort of making sure filmmakers or editors can be involved and things like this. Um, somebody did mention, I think it was on the Discord. Check out the Discord if you haven't, by the way. It is growing slowly. Um selling on Amazon or Netflix. Netflix, as far as I'm aware, is a really, really hard one to like get into before you've done anything. You do get projects that seem to like get produced and then get picked up by Netflix and they get so like they get bought by Netflix. But I think that's a bigger undertaking. Um, Amazon seems to be a much easier one to get into. I know Roof Culture Asia is on Amazon and I know that it's a lot easier to like in the same way, like finish a project and then get, uh, like picked up by Amazon, you go through like a, uh, not an agent, but a, a person and you can, you can get it done. So it, th there's a potential there, but it wouldn't be any, there'll be no like pre money in that. So there wouldn't be any real benefit of doing that, focusing on that now. I don't think somebody else said like, why not get a production crew or so like try and do it that way. I mean, like Mike Christie, who I've already spoken to about getting involved in the documentary from like an interview perspective, obviously shot, jump london and jump britain and it, it works very closely with channel four and things like this but i think realistically not enough time too many moving parts too much red tape too too much um for it to be yeah I'd, i think i'd rather diy this and get it get it yeah may, maybe a massive regret i'm not sure um i've had a few comments about like oh you're not going to be stressed if you half ass it but I think I, I, I don't, th it's more about not getting it done is the biggest thing for me. Um, and ultimately it could be pushed back. You know, if it's like fucking moving and things are really like taking things and things are moving, we're talking sometime next year, like things are happening and it's, it's in place and it's things are being shot and stuff's being edited, et cetera, et cetera. But it looks like it might be a couple of months late because we actually want to get it to that final level. That won't be the end of the world. Uh, it's more that, I just need to get it done from like a part of my soul. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of everything. My voice is, I'm going to literally just go down some honey. And yeah, I think, I don't know, things feel better for some reason. Still, obviously, like it's not like we're out, we're not even seeing the edge of the woods with regards to some of the issues we've got. But 
just doing this every so often and have, as I've said in previous videos, having this like accountability to myself and the conversations that I've been having with people like every other day or so I'm having like a proper deep conversation with somebody who is like, oh yeah, we run a gym and we're experiencing exactly the same issues like well done for talking about it and blah, 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 blah. And as I said, actually on the most podcast, which I think is coming out today, um, like if I think honestly, if you are experiencing stuff, it's so much better to talk about it. So, so much better because otherwise we just all feel kind of alone and we all feel like we're struggling to like survive in this parkour economy. And, you know, we each probably have little advantages that could help each other out that we're not necessarily sharing. Um, I mean, just as I was saying, like. I personally believe I'm pretty good at email marketing from a from an e-commerce perspective, but I think there's other people who could benefit from that. And I, I, I guess maybe I should just reach out to people and say, hey, do you want me to help you or whatever? But um, I think just by discussing these things, it would we could help each other. Sorry, I'm really just kind of fuzzy headed. Um, but yeah feeling good i think apart from feeling disgustingly ill but feeling good business and mentally so appreciate the support etc etc join the discord subscribe like watch it share it it'd be nice if eventually this channel got re-monetized again because then even if these pull in a tiny bit of money at least you know it's money i guess um oh thank you as well because somebody else uh donated to the paypal thing which i think is linked in the youtube description um yeah i truly appreciate it so nice i will hit stop and hopefully this works and yeah love you bye